Indeed, there's a word from the Lord. I know that there's a Lord, word from the Lord this morning. And for that, we give him glory and praise. I come to you today from the subject, from suffering to service. Let us pray. O thou in whose presence our souls take the light on in whom on affliction we call you are our comfort by day. You're our song in the night. You're our hope, you're our salvation, you're everything to us, God. So come now, Holy Spirit, speak to your people because they wait upon you. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank Reverend Caden for uh, reading the scripture and I lift up this gospel written by Mark in the first chapter and going to verses 31 through 34, 32 to 34. And they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening, the whole town gathered and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. From suffering to service. We are living at a time when all over the world there is suffering. Whatever information source you tune into, there is a report about suffering. Because of the pandemic, countries and people all over the world are experiencing all kinds of suffering. All across the world, people are waiting for and looking for and praying for some ease to their suffering. Because of the coronavirus, many millions are looking for relief to their physical suffering. And not only to their physical suffering, this physical restoration is because of illness brought on by the virus and other kinds of illness. They're looking for emotional restoration because of the need to shelter in place. And either we are in close proximity with family members or not. And we need to be physically distant from those we want to be close to. And there is the need for financial restoration because so many people are unemployed. The number is staggering. It's, it's million, it's a million in the United States and we could just think about other countries in the world. And then there is need for spiritual restoration because we are asking, how long, Lord, how long do you care about our plight? Some of us are suffering because of police brutality and man's inhumanity to man. Some of us are suffering because of inequity. Some are suffering because of injustice and unjust political systems. So each of us and all of us are familiar with suffering and seeking an exit. Some resources that we might not be in this suffering too long. And so the current suffering is real, my brothers and sisters, real. And the impact upon each of us is also real. When we talk of numbers of sufferings in the Massachusetts, more than 8,000 cases of the coronavirus. And so there are multitudes of people who are suffering in our state, in our country, and in our world today. More than a million people are unemployed. What suffering that is. But I've come today to remind us that in the past, there has been suffering. And at this present time, there is indeed suffering. And I can assure you that in the future, we will experience suffering. But I've also come to remind myself and to remind each of us and to assure each of us that there has always been suffering, yes. And there will always be a source to which we can go for relief from suffering because we desire to move from our suffering to service. Today, we focus on Mark 1, which records the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. 
The scripture tells us that Jesus and some of his disciples had spent some time in the synagogue, the place where Jesus was preaching and teaching. But then, hallelujah, Jesus and his crew left the synagogue and went to a home, the home of Simon and Andrew. Jesus had left the synagogue, but Jesus's power had not re remained in the synagogue. His concern for suffering had not remained in the synagogue. He left the synagogue and came to a house. His followers had come with him. And Jesus's power today, we thank God, is not restricted to time or place or person. Jesus is now in someone's home. And I know that Jesus through the Holy Spirit is still visiting our homes. And we are about to see Jesus demonstrate his compassion for someone who is suffering. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. And just a few months ago, I identified with her in being in, be in bed with a fever and having to call upon the Lord for restoration. The scripture says in verse 30 to 31, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. So my brothers and sisters, there are many lessons we can learn from this story, but I just wanna offer three lessons today. The first coming from verse 30, and they told Jesus about her. The first point is call on Jesus to intervene in your suffering. Call on Jesus to intervene in your suffering. You can call on Jesus on behalf of yourself, like the woman in Luke 8 and 43, who had been bleeding for 12 long years and had spent all her resources on getting a, a cure, all of which were unsuccessful. So she decided to go into that crowd and to call on Jesus for herself. Or we hear of the healing of the two blind men who were sitting by the roadside, who when they heard that Jesus was going by, shouted as loudly as they could, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately they received their sight. But in Luke, the eighth chapter in the 49th verse, we read about Jairus who comes to Jesus seeking healing for his only daughter. So we can call on Jesus or we can have others call on Jesus through intercession on our behalf. And so in our story today, someone is calling on Jesus on behalf of someone else. The people in Simon's house told Jesus that his mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. And so who is in your house today? Can anybody in your house call on Jesus on your behalf? And just in case there is no one in your house to call on Jesus on your behalf, who are the people in your immediate surroundings? Who are your friends? Who are your acquaintances who can call on Jesus on your behalf? My brothers and my sisters, it is important for us to surround ourselves with those who know Jesus, who know about Jesus's power and can call on Jesus on our behalf when we can't even call on Jesus for ourselves. Jesus was in their physical presence at that time as he walked on the earth. But since he has left us, he promised to send the Holy Spirit. And so he continues to be in our presence through the Holy Spirit. So we must call on him through prayer because he is just an answer away. The hymn writer says it fitly, I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. 
I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, with the reassurance that Jesus will help me, Jesus alone. So if you call on Jesus, this compassionate Jesus will intervene in your suffering. And James reminds us and cautions us in James, the first chapter and the sixth verse. When we ask, we must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. And so that is our first point that you must call on Jesus to intervene in your suffering. So the people in Simon's house called on Jesus and Jesus went to her, took her hand, helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. And so our second point today is, after you have come out of your suffering, go serve. After you have come out of your suffering, go serve. Often when we are released from suffering, we want to dwell on it. We want to tell about it. We want to tell about it in a, in, in a sense that we are a victim and just keep ourselves imprisoned in our experience of suffering. This is the woe is me syndrome and we don't want to live in a woe is me syndrome. But when we are released from our suffering, we must go serve. The woman in this story began to show her gratitude for being released from her suffering by helping others. The woman did so as many biblical figures did. When the Samaritan woman and John met Jesus at the well and Jesus released her from her suffering, which was shame and separation, alienation, she ran to the village to tell everybody, come see a man. She moved from suffering to service. And in our present day, I thank God, this moving from suffering to service doesn't remain only among bi biblical fig figures, but it lives and is alive among us today. We go back just a little while to uh, Congressman John Lewis who went uh, from suffering to service for our benefit. It is recorded that Lewis endured numerous beatings and jailings in his long career, starting in his early 20s. So young people, it's never too early to begin. He began as the leader of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And for the next 36 years, he continued in that work in the House of Representatives and as an Atlanta a congressman. And in 1965, because they can rewind the tape, we were able to re, uh, see the, uh, and reflect on the, what he suffered as the, on the march from Selma to Montgomery and the brutal, brutal confrontation on the Edmund P Pettus Bridge. We were able to see him with the bandages on his head, but still in service to other. He got his skull cracked, but did not stop. He wanted to promote justice and equity and voting that we might have a voice. And so he served the present age, his calling to fulfill. And we too must move from our suffering to serve in this present age. When Jesus raises us up from our suffering, we must go to bless someone else. When Jesus brings you out of your suffering, you need to be a witness. Matthew 10 and 32 says to us, whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my father. So we want to acknowledge the goodness of Jesus. We want to tell others how good, oh, what he's done for us. And the final lesson that I want us to take from this message today is that after he has lifted you up from your suffering, after you have begun to serve, remember this, in the 
verses 32 to 34. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. Oh, what a testimony. Coming from suffering to service, this third point says, your suffering and your restoration can be a message someone is waiting to hear. The word spread about the healing of Simon's mother-in-law and what she did after she was healed and Jesus lifted her up. And the people of the town reasoned, if Jesus can do that for her, let me just go follow this Jesus and see if he can do that for me. He could, whatever he's done for others, we sing, he can do the same for us. And so the whole town gathered. Can you imagine that her testimony saved an entire town? Simon's mother-in-law became a light of hope to those in her community. Her suffering and her service became the message of hope for an entire community. So we trust God to bring us from suffering to service because the scripture records in Ephesians 3 and 20, he is a God who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. What a testimony that the result of our suffering, the result of your suffering, my brothers and sisters, can be the deliverance for someone else. Someone can experience healing because of your story. You have to tell the story. Be a contagious Christian today. Be a willing witness today. Be an excited evangelist today. Let your little light shine that others may come to know God. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. We sang during the civil rights movement and we still sing it today. I'm gonna shine all over my neighborhood. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. 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 So we serve a God who is able, who invites us by saying in the gospel of Matthew, come to me all ye who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your soul. So today, because Jesus suffered phys physical pain on our behalf, we must arm ourselves with the same attitude that he had and be ready to suffer in whatever situations. It might not be physical, but whatever situation brings us suffering. We must know that our God is able and present and willing and compassionate to take us by the hand and lift us from our suffering. And then we must move from that suffering to service that others might from our story, be able to follow and understand that the Jesus that we serve, he is able. He's a willing savior that's in the world today and we must trust him. And so my brothers and sisters, we live at a time of great suffering, but let us not dwell in the suffering, but dwell knowing that we serve a redeemer, one who is able to lift us up and to take us by the hand so that we will call on him, we will serve, and then our story will be a testimony that others might come and follow this Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God and Father, we thank you, O oh God, that your word is filled with examples of your compassionate love for each of us. So we trust God that someone today who might be in suffering and not understand that you're a lifter up of our burdens, Lord God, that that person might understand that if they just call on you and there might be some of us, Lord God, if that person can't call on their own behalf, that we would begin to intercede, Lord God, and lift that person up and bring them out, Lord God, that they might tell others, witness for others, serve others, 
and that others may be able to come to you, Lord God. For that, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so it is our custom in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, after the word is preached, that we would extend the invitation to Christian discipleship to those who are listening. And so my brothers and my sisters, if you are seeking a relationship with Jesus Christ, I can't tell you what a great relationship that is because I'm living it. If you're looking for a church home or if you are seeking for someone to pray with you, if you look on the screen, you will see we have given you our telephone number. So call us at the church office at 617-442-770. Or you can send us a message via our social media pages or through our website. And we, one of the ministers will be in touch with you. We trust that you will know that this church is willing to minister to you, whatever your situation might be. And so we come now to the close of our service. Those of you who are not members of our church, we just thank God that he directed you to come and to share this time with us. We have been blessed because you have been with us. And we invite you to continue to share with us as we continue to worship and praise this God, because it does not yet appear what we shall be, but it is promised that we will be more like him. We will be more like him. And so now God, we thank you for this time we've spent with you. And now may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit may it rest, rule, and abide in our hearts and in our homes and in every place that we inhabit from this day and even forevermore. And together we all say, amen.